Hi everyone, what is up? This video is going to be about the many-to-many -many relationships in web APIs. This video is a continuation of the CRUD operations in web APIs project, which you could find in this web APIs series that I am doing right now. And today we are going to create a many-to-many -many relationship model. Then we'll handle the methods and the way to display this data. So let's start right now. So let me just go back to the project and I'm just going to go to the models and add a new model. Let me just see the users model firstly. Here we have a users model. We have added a one-to-one -one and one-to-many relationship here with username and posts. And I'm just going to need to add another model, which is going to be a many-to-many -many model. And let me just create firstly a community that CS class or model. So one user can be associated to many communities and the community may have uh, different users. This is the idea behind it. I'm just going to need the int ID property firstly for the community and like a name for it would be enough. But in many to many relationships, we also need the, like a helper model, like a middle model. In our case, I'm going to name it a user community. That CS and I'm going to create it. Here we need firstly an user ID pro in property and the user property, which I'm going to name user. And I am pretty much doing the same thing for the community as well. I'm going to need an int uh, community ID property and a community property as well. This is similar to what we have done before in the MVC in ASP.NET Core. And that's what we are doing here in Web APIs as well. It's the same kind of logic. It's exactly the same structure. If we go to the users class here, to the users model, then we're going to create, uh, connect the user to a list of user communities. So we're going to connect it to this middle or to this helper model. I'm going to name it user communities. So the user will be connected to this helper uh, model and then it will be connected to the community model. I'm going to make it nullable so that the user maybe doesn't belong to the community or something. And we don't have a problem when creating it in the beginning. And we're going to paste the same thing in the community model as well. What is left to do now is uh, each time we create a new model, firstly, we need to go to the context and create a DB instance. Firstly, for the community, a DB set instance. So firstly, for the community. I'm naming it communities. And of course, we need another one for this user com community uh, helper model or like middle model. And I'm also going to name it uh, user communities. Just like that. And always when we create a man-to-man -man relationship model, we need to specify this relationship in a function here in the context. The DB context has a method called on model creating, which we're gonna use that takes an instance of model builder as a parameter. This method is called by the framework when our context is first created in order to build the model and its specifications in memory. So we're gonna need this to write the specifications of our man-to-man -man relationship models. So we're going to need to create a method here. This is the protected override void. And the name of the method is on model creating. So firstly here in model builder dot entity user community, we need to specify the foreign keys or the keys. So we click on has dot has key. 
you see for user community and this goes to a new so you see that user id so we specify all of the keys that this user community model has which are the user id and the community id keys and here uh, below we need to specify a few other things so model builder that entity user community inside of it so that has one and here we are going to write the name of the first model that is connected to this user community which is a user model and this user model is connected with many uh, user communities model which we will specify inside here So this user communities here is the name of the DB set instance for the user community, not the name of the model, just so that you know. And then we have to specify the foreign key of this user model, which is the user ID. That's the idea, that's the logic behind it. And we'll do pretty much the same thing for the community model as well. So I'm just copying it down and paste it here and just modifi uh, modify it. So that has one, we write here uh, the community. The community is connected to then to many uh, user communities. And the foreign key that the community has is going to be the community ID. Okay, so now we can go to package manager console and add these migrations. So add migration and we can give it a name so that we know why we added the migration. So like many to many, because we added a many to many uh, model to the project. And we can simply just update the database now. Okay, it's done. Uh, we can go to SQL Server Management Studio because we don't have data for the community and we need to connect the users to the communities in this user community model. So we'll do this, that uh, manually in the database so that we see then how the data will be displayed in our API. So click on connect. Here, let's just go to the databases and the name of my database for the project was this year. I'm going to the tables. And first, let's, let me just see the user that I have here. So edit top 200 rows. We can go and create a community. So go to communities, edit top 200 rows. I mean, community is just something like a Stack Overflow community or like GitHub or whatever the name of the application is. We can go to this user communities model and connect these two with our two users. The user uh, with the ID of two to the first community and we can connect it to the second community as well because it could belong to many communities and we'll connect the user ID 1002 with the first community. Let me just go back to our project and simply go to our DTO to display this. So to specify the way the data will be displayed. So we will display a list of strings so that we can display only the names of these uh, communities. So I made it uh, nullable and I'm naming it user communities.
I'm just going to need to go to the user service and only modify the get all and get by ID methods because there we specify how the data will be displayed. So here, uh, user communities will have the value of the user dot user dot uh, user communities and dot select, and there we'll select there we'll select the C that goes to C dot community dot name, and then to list to list all of the names of the communities that the user is in. And exactly the same thing will go to the get by ID method. That's why I'm just copying it down and pasting it here. Okay, let me just run the project and then we will uh, shortly see how all of this looks in our web APIs. If we go to the get user standpoints and click on try it out and execute. We'll see how this data will be displayed. So here we see how uh, the user communities are displayed as a list of strings and down below as well. And we can see this for a specific user in the get users by the endpoint here. So yeah, we'll see this for the second user, how it is displayed. So that was pretty much it. Uh, I'm going to link the source code down below in, in case you want to check it out. Thank you so much for watching and I will hopefully see you in the next one.